Good morning. We invite your attention to the church announcements for the week of March 24th, 2024. Happy birthday to those members of St. James who will be celebrating a birthday in the month of March. Dr. Walter Henry presents The Fivefold Ministry, God's Design for Building Up the Believer. Join Dr. Henry as he examines the origins and elements of what we have come to know as the Fivefold Ministry. Join him live on Facebook Tuesdays at 12 noon. The conference call line will be used for the Monday-Thursday skit rehearsal. All participants are asked to join the call Tuesday, March 26 at 6.30 p.m. The Henry Logan Starks Ensemble will rehearse Wednesday, March 27th at 6 o'clock p.m. If you are interested in your child participating in this year's Christian Debutantes and Masters Ceremony, please contact Evangelist Gail Jennings via email. Be sure to include the child's name, address, and age. Coins can change communities. Make donations to the Social Justice Ministry now through Sunday, March 31st. Please reach out to your class leader or give St. James a call if you would like to participate in our Monday, Thursday, and Seder meal, March 28th at 6 p.m. The West Tennessee Conference Ministerial Alliance of the AME Church presents the last seven sayings from the cross, March 29th at 12 noon. Join us at St. James AME Church when Reverend Troy Thomas, Reverend Clay Holliday Jr., Reverend Dr. Barbara Green, Reverend Dr. Felicia Ingram, Reverend Hilda Taylor, Reverend Patsy Brown, and Reverend Quentin Smith will each give us their interpretation of one of Jesus's last words from the cross. This year's Mid-Year Conference will be held April 3rd through the 6th at St. Andrew AME Church. All are invited to attend. Prayer truly changes things, and we invite everyone to come to the sanctuary at 8.30 a.m. each Sunday morning as we petition the Lord for change. We offer two Bible study opportunities, one at noon each Wednesday with Reverend John Hall Jr. in person, and a second Wednesday evenings virtually at 5 p.m., with our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Walter Henry. Take a moment to participate in the weekly prayer call every Wednesday from 7 a.m. till 7.30 a.m., led by Reverend Laverta Hill. Be sure to listen to Wisdom from the Word with Dr. Walter R. Henry every Monday and Wednesday at 4.45 p.m. Central Standard Time on popgospelradio.com. Let us remember to keep our church family lifted up in prayer. The prayers of the righteous of...
to fix us. Yes. Yes. We need fixing. Yes. 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 If you look at how things are happening this day, yes. Yes. not just in Memphis, but all around the world, yes. we can all see that people need fixing. Yes. Yes. Their hearts are hard, not soft. We can't make it through this world with a hardened heart. Yes. So, Lord, we need you to fix us. Yes. Yes. We definitely yes. need you to fix us now, Lord Jesus. Yes. We don't want to wait until it's time for us to leave this earth. Because we may not have that time to ask you for forgiveness. We may not have that time to ask, just give me one more chance. So, Lord, if you can start now in helping us get our mindset to be fixed and to keep focus on you, you're fixing us, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. But, Lord, we also know we have to open our mouths to you. We know that our mom and dads and family members pray over us. And they do it daily, Lord Jesus, more than once a day because they want us to be fixed as well. But Lord, we do ourselves have to open our mouths to you. So Lord, we are doing that this day, on this time Sunday. Lord, we're asking you to fix us. Help us, Lord Jesus, because we cannot do it by ourselves. So we definitely need your hand upon us, Lord Jesus. Not just us, but our children our friends' children, our neighborhood children, this whole community. Because, Lord, when we think about the things that are in the news today, there's a lot of fixing that needs to be done. You know, you wonder, where are people's minds? What, what are they thinking about? How can you hurt another individual like that? How can you rob from people and be okay with that? We need fixing, Lord. Yes. And we definitely need your hand upon our lives, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, we ask you this day that you continue to watch over us. Continue to lead and guide our footsteps in the way that we should go. Yes, Lord. And that's even fixing us, Lord Jesus, even in our footsteps. Yes. And as long as our mind is focused on you, we know we are headed in the right direction. Yes. So, Lord, we thank you this day. Thank you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy on us because there's no way we could do what we do, we do what we do each day without you. Yes. You allow us to get up in the morning, Lord Jesus, yes. and to go about our day. And even in going about our day, Lord Jesus, we can't do anything that's good and perfect without you watching over us. Yes. So, Lord, we thank you all the things that we do. Lord, keep our eyes open as well as our heart to watch the next person. Sometimes they just need a smile that we pass by or a pat on the back or a handshake, Lord Jesus. For most of us, it doesn't take much, Lord Jesus, to know that someone cares or someone is looking out for us or love us, Lord Jesus. So Lord, we just thank you this morning for all that you've done and for all that you're going to do for us. Yes. It is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen and amen. 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 The church say amen. 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 Our scripture reading is coming from the 118th Psalm, verses 19 through 29. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us. We beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you. Give us success. 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us life. Bind the festival precision with branches upon up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks to you. You are my God, I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord loves us, and let us be a blessing to his word. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within. Bless his holy name.
meeting this morning. We're going to have a prayer meeting right now.
you, you thought it was because you were so quick, had re good reflexes in the car, but there was no angels watching over you. I learned a long time ago, God takes care of us even when we don't know to take care of ourselves. God is watching over us when we don't know to watch what we're doing. The angels keep watching over me. We, we thank God for our male chorus. Amen. They share it. That's a wonderful, wonderful song for our Palm Sunday celebration. Just to know that we've got personal angels. I got an angel with, with that has my name tattooed on his wrist. You got an angel that has your name tattooed on their wrist looking out just for you. That's how much Jesus loves us. All night and all day, the angels keep watching over me. Amen. Let us, let us bow in prayer. God, we thank you for this moment in time. We thank you, God, that you have kept us, you have blessed us, you watch over us. You, God, you know when we're right, you know when we're wrong, you know, God, our coming out and you know our coming in. We thank you, God, for being the, having the angels stationed around our, our, our houses and our cars and our places of business to watch over. Now, God, as we go into this sermonic moment, it is my prayer that I not be seen, but that you be seen in me, that I not be heard, but that you be heard, God. And we thank you right now for the blessings that we believe you're going to pour out on your people. In Jesus' name, we say amen. amen. The word of the Lord comes to us from the Gospel of Luke in the 19th chapter, Luke 19, beginning at verse 28. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a tithe there a colt that has never been written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who went, who were sent, departed and found it as he told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the ground. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully and with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace be in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. For a theme for the few moments that are mine, why the celebration? Why the celebration? If you watch television or listen to radio, you hear and you see people that are celebrated all the time. You, you hear and you see that politicians are celebrated. When the president enters the, the room, he is celebrated. When the king or the queen of England enters a room, they are celebrated. Uh, when someone has more, a pow more power and authority than we do, 
we sometimes feel like they are worthy to be celebrated or honored as they enter our space. If you ever go to annual conference, you will, will notice that we stand when the bishop enters the room. That's our way of honoring her and celebrating her. If you've ever watched the State of the Union address, the, watched the one that took place a few weeks ago, you'll notice that it took about 20 minutes for the president to get from the door to the, the stage, the rostrum where he was to speak from because people were celebrating him. They were stopping him, taking pictures with him, shaking hands and patting him on the back, commending him for what he was trying to do in the nation. If you ever watch a papal mass, when people see the Pope, they rise to their feet and they celebrate him. When, when a king or queen enters the room, when the king of England enters the room, everything stops. They could be in the middle of a ball, but everything will stop and the band would break into God save the king. It's customary for us to show honor and deference to people who we deem are important or worthy of honor. Now, when we look at our text, we find Jesus preparing to enter into Jerusalem. Jesus, the, the, the one that has done so much for so many is about to enter the city of Jerusalem, and at this point, he has to be acknowledged as a king entering the city. He is being enthroned, and all that he has done for the people is being acknowledged. Jesus is coming into the city, not at this time, he's not coming in by the back door. He's not coming in in secret. Jesus is coming in in grand style. He's coming in because the people are celebrating him as the king of the Jews. Now, now, Jesus is entering Jerusalem as it was prophesied in the Old Testament book of Zechariah, and, and the people were celebrating, the people were raising their voices in, in, high, in honor and praise to Jesus, the newly acknowledged King of the Jews. They were laying palm fronds and their cloaks at his feet. They were laying them on the ground because he was a king, and you have to know that even the horse that the king rides on, their feet are not meant to touch the ground because this is the king that's coming in. So they spread palm fronds in order to have a buffer between the hoofs of the donkey and the ground. There were shouts of glory to God in the highest. Glory, hallelujah. The people were ready to receive their king. But some of the Pharisees told them to stop celebrating. Told them that you are celebrating this man as if he's a king. You, you, you must remember that the Pharisees did not believe Jesus was the Messiah. They, they hardly believed he was a good teacher or a good prophet. All they saw him was as a troublemaker. But, and they told, some of the Pharisees went to Jesus himself and said, stop them from all this adulation. Stop them from celebrating you. Stop them from hollering Hosanna. Stop them from saying what they're saying and doing what they're doing. Some of it was from pure jealousy. You know how we get when we're jealous. We're going to find a way to stop somebody from being celebrated. Some of it is pure jealousy. Keep, keep watching the, the, pop, the political debates as this year progresses. You will hear pure jealousy because someone believes that the other one does not need to be celebrated. They're going to find everything wrong instead of finding something right. The, the Pharisees, some of them were jealous of Jesus, and some of them was because that they just did not believe Jesus was the Messiah. They, they thought he was probably a good man, but he wasn't the Messiah. Then they looked at him as he was a skilled teacher, but, but he was not the Messiah. He was an intelligent rabbi, but surely he was not the Messiah. Uh, Jesus broke the mold of what they thought the Messiah was supposed to look like and to be like and to do. Uh, Jesus was not swathed in royal robes. He, he didn't even enter the, the city on a chariot or even riding some regal majestic stallion. He, he didn't overthrow the Roman government as they thought the Messiah would. He, he didn't hang around the synagogue spouting Jewish platitudes. He didn't 
act as though he could not get his hands or feet dirty with the work of helping and loving the people. Jesus was, did not present himself the way they thought he should have. And sometimes people get caught up in the way you present themselves and forget who you really are. Whether I'm cleaning the toilet or whether I'm wearing a, a three-piece suit and a robe, I'm still the pastor of the church. Amen. 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 Whether, whether I'm pushing a lawnmower or whether I'm preaching a eulogy or a sermon, God has still placed me here to lead this congregation. And, and, and Jesus was being celebrated no matter what he did, no matter how he approached it, Jesus still had to be celebrated because he was indeed the king of the Jews. He just was not what they thought he should be. Now, you know the they will get you in trouble. If you start acting like the they, you're going to have you're gonna be in a hot mess. If you start acting like the they, the they will have you convinced that you need to be worshipped. The, the they will have you convinced that you are the one that is so great. The they will have you convinced that people should bow down to you. People should open the door for you. People should carry your bags, your hat, your your your, your robes, and your, your luggage. The, the they will have you convinced of that. But Jesus said, no, I can do my own work. I can carry my own bag. I carry my own cloak. As a matter of fact, he told them, don't take too many cloaks because you got to get up and move quickly. But Jesus was not the, the Messiah. They thought him that he thought he was supposed to be. Jesus hung around the sinners. He routine, routinely touched those who were deemed untouchable by the social elite of the Jewish society. He did not spend his time in places they thought he should be spending it. Jesus was the opposite of what they said a Messiah was supposed to be. Therefore, in their minds, in their logical minds, he could not possibly be the Messiah. So why are we celebrating some pretender? They did, could not get it through their heads that the Messiah could be meek and low. If the Messiah could come in humility, the, the Messiah could come and not as a grandly celebrated warrior, but as an humble servant of the people. They, they, couldn't, they, they couldn't get it through their heads. They could not understand why the people were praising him and shouting, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus was being as lauded as king, but the Pharisees told him, stop making people, stop allowing the people to praise you. Stop allowing the people to celebrate you. Stop allowing the people to say Hosanna in the highest. Stop allowing the people to lift you up that way. But Jesus remarked, reminded them that if these people don't praise me, if they don't holler out my name, if they don't celebrate me, if they don't acknowledge me as who I am, if they cannot say who I am, if they cannot praise me, if they cannot worship me, then you're going to hear something come up from the ground. You're going to hear a whisper from the ground saying, Hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest. You're going to hear a whisper in the ground that says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You're going to hear a whisper from the ground that says, Hail Jesus, he's my king. You're going to hear a whisper from the ground that's going to say, Hallelujah, anyhow. You're going to hear a whisper from the ground that's going to say, That's my king. The rocks are going to start crying out. Jesus made it plain that if no other time I'm going to be celebrated, this is my day. So y'all need to back up off me and let the people do what they do. Jesus understood why everything was happening. Jesus, uh, and Jesus through God the Father, was also very, very understanding and he comprehended timing well. He comprehended that today they're going to be celebrating me, but in a few days I'm going to be hanging on a cross. Today they're celebrating me, but in a few days a kangaroo court is going to convict me and, and based on some trucked up charges from some folk that don't like me as they hand me over to other folk who don't know what to do with me. So Jesus is saying, right now, let me have my moment. Let, let me have my moment. Let me have this space for people to acknowledge who I am. But Jesus let the Pharisees know people have to praise me. They have to celebrate me because they're acknowledging who I am and what I've done. 
They know who I am and they're grateful. He, Jesus was the long-awaited king. Jesus was the one prophesied about in the Old Testament as being the root of Jesse coming directly from the line of David through 42 generations. And now it's time for him to step into his lordship. He has come in the name of the great I am. He is indeed the one who came to redeem them from their sins. They have to praise him. They have to celebrate who he is. He is Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, coming to save us from our messy selves. He is Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, coming to heal our crooked backs and straighten up our bent legs. He is Jesus, King of the Jews, Emmanuel, God with us, who has come to lay hands on us and our issues will dry up. We will not only be healed, but we'll be made whole. So again, why the celebration? Well, Jesus loved us enough and came to earth to live among us. Jesus has done some wonderful things, so we celebrate what Jesus did. But what has Jesus done? Well, Jesus is healed. So there's a few folk I just want to remind you of that Jesus is healed. If you talk to the blind beggar on the side of the road, Jesus gave him his sight back. Jesus saw him, saw him struggling, asked the beggar, what do you want? And he said, if I could just see again, I think I'd be all right. And, and, and Jesus let him know that if that's what you want, that's what I'm here to do. So he healed the blind beggar. He, he healed the 10 lepers, the lepers who were crying out from across the road. Jesus, can you help us? Jesus, can you do something about us? Jesus, can you lift, the, can you touch our bodies? Jesus, can you fix this problem? Jesus goes across to, to minister to them. He wasn't supposed to touch them because lepers were known to be unclean because of everything going on in their bodies. Lepers were the unclean of the unclean, if you will. They lived in colonies all by themselves. But this tent decided that no matter what's going to go on, we're going to go out and find some help. Ain't nobody trying to help us anywhere else. So maybe we can find some help from somewhere. And they came along and found Jesus. And Jesus healed the ten of them. Only one of them came back to say thank you. But Jesus still healed all ten of them. But the one he said, not only are you made, are you healed, but you're whole. Not only are you healed, but all your stuff is going to start to come together. Not only are you healed, but your family is going to come back together. Not only are you healed, but your life is going to come back together. Not only are you healed, but I'm going to make you whole. He healed the man that had the palsy. Uh, they, they call it dropsy. Then they, we call it palsy now. He had what we would call cerebral palsy now. And his, his body was contorted into different shapes. And, and unfortunately and sadly, the man couldn't move. But when Jesus touched him, he was able to stretch out his hands and stretch out his feet and sit up straight. Jesus healed him. Jesus healed the woman who had the audacity to push through the crowd. Jesus healed the woman who had the temerity to push people out of her way. Jesus healed the woman who was, was, was courageous enough to say, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just get near him, he doesn't have to say a word, he doesn't have to touch me, if I can touch him. I know I'll be made whole. He healed the woman who was crippled for 18 years. He healed the centurion's son. He healed a man with a withered hand. He healed a leper and a paralyzed man. Jesus healed us. Yes. Yes. Not only did he heal us, but Jesus has provided for us. Jesus has delivered us. Jesus has forgiven us. He fed the 5,000 on the mountainside with two fish and five loaves. He, he, he's the one that knew how to do divine math who looked at a little boy's lunchbox and said, here, just take it and let it go. Let, let, let's keep on distributing it. Then he gave it to the disciples. He prayed over it, thanked God for it, and said, give it out to the people. And they had leftovers to take home in their prehistoric doggy bag. Jesus calmed the storm on the sea when Jesus was in the bottom of the boat and everybody else was freaking out. Everybody was losing their minds. Everybody had, they were upset because Jesus was asleep in the boat. They were angry because Jesus was asleep in the boat. But I, let, me, let me pause and put a comma there for just a second. As long as Jesus is with me, it doesn't matter if he's sleeping or not. I know he's there. If Jesus is in the boat with me, don't be worried, but they were. But then he woke up, came up on the, on the boat, and the top of the boat, on the top deck, and said, peace, 
Be still. Jesus went into a cemetery and found a man that was filled with demons. Not one, not two, but thousands of demons. So much so, until he was running around the cemetery naked, banging his head on the tombstone. And when Jesus called out the demons and called out, called out all of the stuff, this man was able to stand up and be clothed and in his right mind. Jesus met the Samaritan woman who had five husbands, who, who he told uh, number six, ain't your, husband, or ain't your husband. Now we talk so badly about the Samaritan woman, but there's a lot of stuff we don't know about her. Some theologians say that the Samaritan woman could not have children, and you can divorce your wife for not having children, but she can only try it five times. So that's why she was shacking with the dude she was shacking with. She couldn't marry him because her five, number five, had come up. But the point is, she was a broken sister. She was a woman who had been used, tried, they tried to use her for her body, but when they found out they couldn't get anything, they kicked her to the curb. She was rejected, she was broken, she was hurt, she was bound up. But when Jesus saw her, he said, I got some water for you that you make you never thirst again. I got something you can drink that's going to help you. I got something that I can give you that a well of water that is never going to run dry. Right. Not only has he cared for us and given us peace and delivered us, but he has taken care and blessed our families when we couldn't do it ourselves. Ooh. This, now, see, this hits differently looking back on the last 12 months of my life. Jesus raised Jairus' daughter. Jairus came to him and said, Sir, my, my baby's dying. Now Jesus got interrupted by the woman with the issue and the baby died by the time he got done there. But Jesus, all he had to do was speak a word. Jesus raised the widow's son. Jesus was at a funeral and broke up the funeral, laid his hand on the casket and said, Son, get up. Jesus killed Simon's mother-in-law. She had a fever, and the fever was about to kill her, and she was at a point, at the point of death. Jesus laid hands on her. Not only did the fever depart, but sister girl got up and started cooking dinner and started to feed the people that were there. Yeah, yeah. Jesus called the demon out at the base of the mountain after being transfigured. Jesus healed. Jesus has taken care of and Jesus has blessed our families when we could. Jesus, that we we are are excited about. This is why we celebrate. This is why we get excited. This is why on Palm Sunday we wave our palms and say Hosanna in the highest because Jesus has done what nobody else could do. Jesus has done what we needed somebody to do, but that somebody couldn't do it. Jesus has done what no other power could do. Now we celebrate a lot of things. We celebrate a lot of people. Back on May 6th of last year, King Charles III was officially crowned the King of England at Westminster Abbey by the Archbishop of Canterbury. And during the ceremony, they said, to the north, hail Charles, sovereign King of England. To the south, hail Charles, sovereign King of England. To the east, hail Charles, sovereign King of England. To the west, hail Charles, sovereign King of England. But I just want to remind you today that there's a king important than, than Charles. There's a king that got a little more power than Charles III. So today we have come to say, Hail Jesus, Simon King of the Universe. Hail Jesus, Simon King of the World. Hail Jesus, Simon King of my life. Hail Jesus, Simon King in my soul. Hail Jesus to the north. Hail Jesus to the south. Hail Jesus to the east. Hail Jesus to the west. Hail Jesus. That's my king. You can worship who you want to. But right now, I'm going to say, Hail Jesus. I'm going to say, Hail Jesus. Because on October 16th, 
at 2.30 in the morning. The woman that ushered me into the world was ushered back to glory. I was at a point where I wasn't ready for her to go. Didn't want to see her go. Mama's not supposed to leave me. She's supposed to be around to live to be 100. I'm supposed to be able to, to see her grow gracefully, not leave me in pieces. But I, all I could do was thank God and say, Hail Jesus, because you gave her to me. You made her my mama. And while I'm sad and my heart is breaking, I can still say thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hail Jesus. Because you brought her, you brought me through her. When she could have decided she wanted to be free black single at 21. And decided that she was going to go to some clinic and that was going to be the end. I'm here. Because she understood the assignment. And all I can say is, hail Jesus. There's somebody in here today. You're coming to understand that it's nobody but Jesus that has done in your life what you needed to do. You may be like me, missing your mother, missing your father. But know that you have a Jesus that is going to stick closer than a brother or a sister. There's so many things out in this world that draw our attention, that try to grab us. But let me just remind you that Jesus is still king. We need to celebrate our king in majesty. Celebrate our king as royalty. As we stand all over the church, there may be someone today. You can't celebrate Jesus because you're not quite sure who he is. Let me introduce you to him. Let, let, let me show you who he is. I'm not perfect. I'm not, I'm not the Savior. I'm not perfect like the Savior. But I can point the direction. I can show you how to get to Jesus. So today, if there's one that wants to accept this Christ that we're celebrating, you want to accept this Jesus that we love dearly, that we have announced is the king of all kings. If you want to accept that Christ, the altar is open. If you walked away from Jesus, you acknowledged him as king of your life. But something happened that broke the relationship. The one thing about this king, this king will accept you back. In the world throughout history, we learn that kings and queens, once you leave them, many of them will not ever entertain your presence again. But Jesus will let you come back as many times as you need. Is there one who will come back? Is there one who needs a spiritual home? Somewhere to work out your soul salvation. You know and acknowledge Jesus and have a solid relationship but just need a spiritual home. Do not be spiritually homeless. Today is your day. If you need salvation, if you need reconciliation, if you're looking for fellowship, today is your day. Now is your time.
there's nothing you will withhold from Jesus. I, in my travels and in my career in ministry, I've learned that sometimes we'll compartmentalize. We'll decide that we trust Jesus with one thing in our lives, but not another. We'll trust Jesus with our health, but not with our children. We'll trust Jesus with the children, but not with our finances. We'll trust Jesus with our finances, but not our relationship. And I simply mean sometimes we try to fix stuff that we think Jesus can't fix. But let me say to you, there's nothing in your life that should be untouched by the Savior. Amen? So as we are preparing to give, I'm going to ask our Ushers, please make sure we have, uh, everyone has their offering envelope. I'm asking that you will trust God. Trust God with the tithe and with the offering. Believe that God is going to use it to build up the kingdom. Believe that God is going to open doors and windows and pour out blessings that we're not worthy, but because of God's grace and mercy, we will receive. Amen. 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 I'm asking you to trust God. Yes. We have, uh, as you've seen, we have completed two major projects in the last uh, couple of, uh, last few weeks. Um, one is under the church and one is in the fellowship hall. So we are thankful for what God is doing. And there's a lot more work that we have to do. And ministry takes money. Okay, the baby agreed with me. <laughs> she said, I like her. Ministry takes money. It takes finance. It takes faith, but it also takes finance. I'm asking you again to trust God with your tithe and your offering. Brother Flowers is is here to uh, collect our uh, coins that will change the community. And that's a, a work, a project that we're working on with our social justice ministry. Some of you, uh, men's name was a few weeks ago. Uh, if you still have opportunity to give, if you're still paying on it, we thank you and God bless you. Uh, but if you have not, we ask that you will do that, amen. We're now in the hands of our ushers. It is offering time.
has anyone had an opportunity to give? And y'all know what the baby gave. If you're picky about who you gonna give it to. <laughs> She did give it. Let us let us stand on the church. Lord, we thank you that we have been able to give some of what you have given us. We give to you, God, because all things come from you. And we have given you simply back some of that which you have given to us. We pray you bless it and consecrate it. In the name of Jesus our Christ, we say amen. 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 Exceptionally hard, pulling all of us together, gave us our parts and made sure we know what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. Um, so Monday, Thursday, 6 p.m., we will participate in our Monday Thursday. <laughs> and we will also be having a Seder meal. A Seder meal is an observance of the meal that the Egyptian, sorry, the Hebrews had right before they left Egypt. They, it's celebratory of the Passover. Jesus gave them, the God gave them specific directions about how to observe and what to do. So we're gonna participate in a Seder meal. In order for us to be prepared, uh, Sister Doris Flowers needs your name so we will have a proper count. Please send her, call her, run by the house, knock on the door, pin it on Brother Alfred's back, something. By 7 p.m. this evening so that she can have a proper count. So she will definitely, she will have a proper count. Amen. 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 And on Friday, we will uh, be hosting the AME Ministerial Alliance of Memphis and Vicinity, hosting the seven last sayings of Christ from the cross. 12 noon, 12 noon, 12 noon. Please, St. James, I ask you to be here. We don't want to have company and ain't nobody home. I need y'all to talk back to me now. Amen. Amen. So we will be, uh, we will be uh, celebrating or observing that day, uh, the seven last sayings of Christ from the cross. Now, there are a couple people that gave me announcements to give, and y'all know I forgot them. But uh, Sister Jeff, remind me of what I'm asking folk for. Amen. Sister Artressa Malone, we, we know her as Aunt Tripp, will turn 104 on April the 12th. <laughs> and the, the family is going to be with her. If you'd like to send a gift, a greeting, something, uh, make sure that Sister Jeff or Brother Jeff or one of the Walsh family, amen, has that gift. A Tripp would love to to hear from you, even if it's a card, just remembering her. She would love to hear from you. The, our president of Women's Day, Sister King. Women are starting in an old-fashioned event on next Sunday for the kids, so come out and be yeah. and help the children with the event. An old-fashioned Easter egg hunt. Say that one more again. Next Sunday. Next Sunday, right after church. Next Sunday, right after church. So bring your babies. We... This is going to be a hygienic Easter egg hunt. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, I just want to be clear. I know someone's thinking eggs outside, and I just want to make sure you know that we will be taking all of our precautions, but our children will still have a chance to enjoy themselves and be children. Amen. Amen. There's another announcement. Yes, ma'am. That's it. Uh, there won't be any noonday Bible study this week or next week. For the next two weeks, there won't be any noonday Bible study. And let me go ahead and uh, I won't have the pastor's Bible study in the evening this week, but we'll come back next week. So no noonday for the next two weeks, and my Bible, uh, the evening Bible study will be canceled for just for this week. Amen. Yes. There'll be no Bible study. 
Friday. No prayer call Friday. Wednesday but not Friday. This is why I tell folk that I, <laughs> that, that's why I tell folk don't, don't catch me on the fly because sometimes my brain goes somewhere to the north. But uh, again, we ask that you will heed all of our announcements. Um, at this time, this is again Palm Sunday. And this is a time when we acknowledge and celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So as we prepare to celebrate, and I need a palm because I didn't get one before service started. <laughs> Thank you. And um, please, I don't know if Sister Martin can hear us, but she wants our babies to participate, and I want them to participate too. So we need to make sure that they, they amen, amen. But again, remember that Palm Sunday is a day of celebration. It's a day when we acknowledge Jesus as Lord and King. And as we are acknowledging Christ, let us acknowledge Christ every day of our lives. Let us not be like the crowd. They acknowledged him that Sunday. They acknowledged him that Sunday. But by Thursday, the tide had turned in a most ugly way. But let us not betray Christ, but let us at all times acknowledge who Christ is and uh, what Christ has done in our lives. Amen. Yes. Let us acknowledge how Christ has worked in our lives, what Christ has done. So today, we're going to celebrate our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And amen. We're still waiting for the babies to come. We're not going to leave them out. Amen. Here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Those of you who are educators, you know what it's like to corral <laughs> a bunch of 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14 year olds. And let them. And what I want y'all to do, I want y'all to come line up in front of the church. You're going to help me lead the celebration. Come and line up in front of the church. You're going to help me lead the celebration. That's, we always talk about a, a child will lead them. Our children are going to lead us today. Amen. Don't go on. Come spread out. Spread out for me. All the way across here. All the way across here. Come back this way. <laughs> Come spread out. Cross it. Spread out for me. Come this way. Amen. Come on, y'all spread out. Y'all spread out. Come on, a little bit more. A little bit more. We're gonna take time so we can do this, do this well. There we go. Dion wanted to make sure she saw her daddy before she waved the palm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The people, as they were standing, let me call that, the people, as they were welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem, they were laying palms at Jesus' feet. So as we listen to the words of this melody, I want to ask us to stand, and we're going to celebrate uh, at the, the observance, the celebration of Jesus being worshipped and received as king. Over all the way green palms and blossoms came are strewn this day in festal preparation when Jesus comes to the frontiers away. Even now the throng to welcome him prepare. Join all and sing his name, declare. Let every voice resound with acclamation. Hosanna, praise be the Lord. Bless him who cometh to bring us salvation. Amen. Sing and rejoice, O bless Jerusalem. We can keep waving, amen. 
and we're just going to say the benediction as we wave. Now unto him that we hail, king of our lives. Now unto him that we hail as king of this world. We give all glory, all majesty, all dominion, all power, henceforth, now, and forevermore. Let all of God's people say amen, 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 amen. amen. and amen. amen. Thank you to our young people. They didn't know they were going to do this, but thank you.